Well, this is uh, a great, great, uh, just an amazing day because I get to talk to Winston McCall of Parkway Freaking Drive. Dude, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm glad I'm making it such a great day. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, well, um, it's it's great because I get to talk to you, and it's also I've never talked. This is the the obligatory American joke of I get to talk to someone in the future. How is Friday over there? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's actually really nice considering we had like first five months of this year entirely raining the sun's out so that's great oh, wow look at us <laughs> <laughs> on the up and up i like to hear that be prepared um, be prepared it's coming in good <laughs> <laughs> awesome um so you know let's let's kick things off with what uh, everyone wants to know and uh how's the band going uh you guys posted a lot of messages about uh, you know your mental health and and wanting to take a break in that and um, and then you come out with glitch and it kind of threw us all for a loop. So I, um, what's, what's going on, man? Um, we're good. We're, we're, we're really, really good. It's, um, it's a very hard one to navigate in terms of, uh, letting people in to basically letting people behind the curtain of how a band operates and, um, trying to maintain a level of stability and trust within what we what we do and also being true to um i guess the t i'll say the toll but like the impact of what that what being in a band has on people and for us um it was a really interesting position because we've uh, like we've come through all of this covid stuff basically it's been a massively mass massively upheaving time to be in a band um and for us this has come at the basically this year we're running into year 20 of being in this band um and we went to go back on the road for the first time which would have been this tour um and a whole bunch of stuff uh basically reared its head in terms of uh our mental health and where we were as a band and we sat down and we had some talks about it um and we realized basically we were at a point where we had pushed a lot of stuff under, basically under the rug to keep this band going over like 20 years and just work, 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 disregard. Like something, something's affecting you, push it to the side just so you can keep playing shows. Cause if you don't play shows, basically the band will die. <laughs> um, and we went to go back on the road and we're like, we all sat down and all this stuff finally actually came out and we're like, we, have some work to do if we don't do this personal work the band's literally gonna not exist and then no one's gonna get shows so it was a really confronting difficult period to go through because i mean it's a hard one when you when you're only just coming to terms with the impact of 20 years of of doing this thing like it's it's over half our entire lives on this planet being in this band and you're only just reckoning with it and you have a time frame of like, can you get this done before these shows are supposed to happen? Um, it's just difficult. And we just try, we try, tried to let people in in the most honest way possible, but at the same point in time, um, giving ourselves the space to be able to be, be honest and frank with ourselves of where we're at um, with basically with the aim of, we still want to do this. So let's figure out what we've got to put in place to do it. Um, man, we didn't want it to basically self combust <laughs> because that was a very real chance. We were like, we could try and do this tour, but there's a very good chance that that would be the last tour this band ever does. And then no one gets music anymore. So it was a, yeah, it's been, it's been a really, really good process, but it's been a very challenging process, put it that way. <laughs> I can imagine. And, you know, talking about being a band for 20 years and then, you know, come into grips with, you know, the mental health stuff we hear on, uh, on Razor, we, we just got done doing a whole month of talking about mental health and talking to bands and, and like their personal struggles and things like that. And, um, you know, it wasn't until probably a week ago where I had to sit down and talk to myself and be like, whoa, bro, like you're preaching all this stuff about, you know, getting treatment for anxiety yep. and depression and things. And I wasn't doing any of that. I was just yeah. trying to get that, that product out, that, that message, and then failing to receive it myself. Yeah, that's, that's completely it. And, and like, 
to be fair, like I, it's, it's just such a common thing in life in general these days. It seems like everything moves in a very, very, very fast cycle and it, nothing's slowing down. Like the attention span of people is, is shorter. The demand to complete, to pump out product of any kind of content of anything is, is very, um, very short. Um, and it leaves you very little time to, to be able to reflect. And I, I guess in that way, like, well, we've still been basically working our ass off during COVID. It was the break from touring, which gave us that little bit of time to reflect because previously, like being in a band, you have, you basically have stuff planned two years out. Like, it's not like something where you know, us canceling this tour, it's not something where like, oh, we'll just, we'll just pull the pin. There's no impact. You're like we lose hundreds of thousands of dollars and burn a lot of bridges and disappoint a hell of a lot of people. It's not something that you can just do. And then you can't just hop on a plane and go, it's back on next month. Like you have to slot that back into a cycle that was planned two years ago. So it's a, it's a really challenging thing to do. And previously it was very hard to be able to make that time to be able to, yeah, to actually reflect on all of those things. And like it, it, it had to happen and I'm glad it did because the band will survive because of it. It was just a very, like, especially knowing we had like, glitch coming out like there's something as well that we're like okay we know this is coming out like nine months down the track kind of thing and we're like oh, how the hell are we even going to inform <laughs> people and not confuse the hell out of them with this i guess at least there's going to be a little bit of um sunshine on the other side of like the gray clouds that they're going to get before this single drops but um yeah we appreciate everyone's we, we, we got a lot of support from a lot of people, very understanding and very encouraging with the way we dealt with it, which was great. And I'm sure a hell of a lot of people were really confused as well. But at the same point in time, we did it in the truest way possible. So everything we got back from that was 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 comforting. It was very comforting to know that fans are um, supportive of that route. Well, you guys have been doing this, you said now, for 20 years, which mm-hmm. blows my mind because, you know, I, I remember like, 2004 and like all, like the like deep blue and all those albums coming out and just being like hell yeah like parkway is <laughs> like that that's my thing man um but like 20 years is like you guys have almost been around as long as slipknot and i would say you know that you, you're right up there with them in uh in in draw um, <laughs> <laughs> um but I, I like when you look back at 20 years of parkway what what do you see um, it's really interesting. What, what I see is my life flashing before my eyes <laughs> because it is such, it's such a time warp, like being involved in this is, it's something which, which it, I don't know if, if everyone else experiences this as they grow up, but man, life starts moving really, really quickly. Oh, yeah. and I, I remember every single thing about this band, like maybe not the very minor details, but some pretty small details going back to literally like our first jam before we even had a band name kind of thing um and being in it has been it's been fascinating because for me well for for everyone in band i can speak for everyone it's been this constant evolution process with us in terms of our love for music and basically following um like chasing chasing that tail which is a combination of the love of the sound and the challenge of what you want to do with that sound in terms of constantly being interested, which is where the, the evolution has come in for us. Like it's been, we've always tried to try to create something that was a couple of steps beyond anything we'd created before, be it faster, slower, more different, softer, heavier, whatever. It's been that constant thing of, do something you hadn't done before because it's the interesting thing for you. And after 20 years of doing it, you find like you've done a lot of things. So the influences become more different and more weird. <laughs> and, but it's, it's, it's strange because like, it's, you still like, we still all hold on to the same anchor point um, in the way of writing music for us, which is, do we enjoy listening to it? Do we enjoy playing it? Um, and it's always rooted in some kind of distorted heaviness. And other than that, it's, uh, it's basically been watching, like I can look back at the growth in our perspective of how we actually create music and go, wow, like I can't believe we've come this far. Like every time we do a new album, I'm like, I could not imagine that person that first started this band ever being able to 
create what we can create now. And that's the really fulfilling part of what we do. <laughs> that's so, it, it's so cool to be able to look back and be gracious of like the journey that you've done, you know, and, yeah. and you guys have always done, had that and it's so great. Um, but you said something about influences and how there's, you know, the fewer influence, but what are those, the influences that, that make you want to make the heavy music that you do? Um, for us, it's the feel. It's the feel of it. Like we have influences in so many types of music. Like um, it's, it's interesting because like the main writing group uh, for us is Jeff, our lead guitarist, our drummer, Ben and myself. And between the three of us, we have quite different points of interest that we draw from. Um, and we all bring them in to create this strange meld of an album. It's always an album. Whenever we write, we, we don't write with just like the idea of let's just write a song and then we'll write another song at the end of the day, we'll throw it all together. It's a, it's a complete concept of work, everything we ever do. Um, and it goes from Jeff being a, like a guitar player, like the dude literally doesn't listen to lyrics at all. So like <laughs> his favorite band is Metallica. Like he loves like Metallica and Dire Straits and flipped out over the new Ghost record and um, a bunch of contemporary stuff as well. And Ben lis listens to a bunch of rock and a bunch of old like 60s and 70s stuff as well. And I'm listening to everything from God, Lorna Shaw to Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> contemporary pop and stuff like that. And then a, a bunch of other weird stuff. Um, so you drag all of that together and there's, there's really no boundaries to what we actually do. We just bounce off each other and we find that these different polar points that each individual draws from really gets distilled into this like stained glass, which is the Parkway picture. And when we're writing, it's, it's, it's always something where we all find that whatever interest we're bringing in gets amplified by the other people into the final the final song and then into the final album, which is a, a really cool thing. Like you can bring your very different viewpoint from the other members of the band and find that no matter what, they will bring this factor or this sound to what you're creating that you could not have imagined in your mind. And it always elevates it, which is how we end up with the final thing that you hear, I guess. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so you, you go in and you, you're already, you're, you're writing, you write albums, not just songs. What mm -hmm. is the, the concept of uh, the new album? And does it have a, a title that I'm allowed to know? You can't know that stuff yet. Ah, come it's on, man. Just <laughs> press. I'm so sorry. Um, there's, there's quite a deep concept to it. Um, to be honest, like the, there's, there's a depth to everything that we do, the way that we, I think we've only ever written one true concept album, which was which was Deep Blue um, in terms of me trying to put a narrative in there. But uh, when you're just going rah, 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 the whole time, the narrative <laughs> tends to fly past a little bit. But um, the, basically the way that I deal with writing, writing the lyrics for the album, it's essentially um, an artistic snapshot of a point in time, which is the time period over which we're writing the album. Like it's, it's a very personal, experience um as avant-garde as uh writing lyrics can end up being um they have to come from a place of truth in the sense of like it's i'm not the kind of person that can sit down and force a song out like oh i'll practice my craft every single day in terms of writing but um the the music and the time that you're writing will take you into the song and that speaks for an entire entire album and um, I've always found myself reflecting the darker elements of my psyche through the music that we create. And um, this one's a dark one. <laughs> <laughs> really? After all yeah, this yeah, stuff you've been talking about. Drive, like, dark heavy music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely quite an introspective um, journey. Through the through the music that you're going to be hearing, but um, a very very varied journey. Um, there's stuff coming out definitely that we we have approached in a far different way from anything we've done before. Like even down to the way we've we've written future music. Um, it was it was basically the the world started ending and we're like, all right, no holds barred, go absolutely ham with whatever you're going to do. 
and spend the time committing to stuff that you wouldn't have had time to do in the past in terms of literally learning how to write certain compositions and certain styles and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what people make of it. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of styles did you, um, did you personally, uh, you know, try to expand your, your skill set with? Everything, everything in terms of, um, in terms of my, my craft of being a singer, um, it's a very, 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 varied, very, very, very varied. <laughs> um, it's, it, it, the palette has been far more expanded. Like I've constantly been just trying to work on vocal techniques. And for me, it's been a, a backwards evolution in terms of, I knew how to scream and that was it when we first started and slowly I've learned about music and how to control my voice in the more subtler ways all the way down to actually singing. And um, it's always about basically being able to create character for me. Like I'm never going to be the guy that can belt those high notes and I'm never going to be John Bon Jovi or anything like that. And I have no desire to, but I just want to be me and have who I am and all of these different voices running around in my head, being able to translate into, uh, into song and into an actual vocal performance. So um, there's, there's some tender stuff. There's some really angry stuff. There's some very creepy stuff. There's some very aggressive stuff. <laughs> That's the best way I could probably describe it. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, you kind of piqued my interest with tender. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard a, a Parkway song yeah. and been like, Oh, that was a tender moment. Yeah. <laughs> mm, tender moments there. Tender moments when he really got the pit activated. Mm, tender. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what I always try and do though. Like I, I, I've always tried to try and find something that I can't do and figure out how to do it. Because the more, like, the, the thing with Parkway has always been, it's always about light and uh, light and dark and being able to work the differences, like the elasticity between those two elements, because that's the dynamic. And the, the more you have, uh darkness and lightness the more you can make those like you have the contrasts and it's the contrast which makes those bits really really impactful and that works for the vocals as well like you're limited like i in the past especially would be limiting on our ability to create music because i could only do certain amounts of things which means we could only travel down a certain road to, route to a certain degree and we love going heavy but at the same point in time we like going soft but if we want those heavy bits to really shine, then we've got to be able to make sure that the, the soft parts work as well as they can. So when it bounces back to the other end, it, it, it hits like a sledgehammer rather than someone hitting you over the head with a spoon a thousand times. So <laughs> gotcha. it's a bit of the, the pixies uh, way of going yep. about it. You know, the, yeah. the loud, quiet, loud type of thing. Yeah. That's it. I was very good at the loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I started with just the loud and that was it. <laughs> Oh, it, it, that's really exciting in 20 years of the band and you know you you're pushing forward with your your vocals and you know you know the vocals are an instrument in themselves so it's it's always cool to see um vocalists wanting to expand on that what is what's next for parkway ah uh, the next the next chapter basically it's it, like if it's very interesting we um we're kind of trying to figure that out at the moment um because it's COVID hit at such a strange time for us. Like it, it's literally, we haven't, we've played one show in the last two and a half years, <laughs> which is such a strange concept. Like it's all left my body, like the, the feeling of being on the road, the feeling of all of this stuff. And it, it kind of, it was bookmarked by us playing literally like the biggest career highlight show of our life at Vakken um, before this whole thing shut down. And it felt like we had literally like pushed this boulder up to the peak of this mountain. And then COVID came along and was like, no more. <laughs> um, but it, it really felt like this massive pressure release to finally reach this level, which we never thought possible. And then you get there and it's fantastic. And then it kind of stops and we're kind of at peace. So now when it all kicks back off again, we kind of have to reassess what we want to do with it. The drive is obviously still there. The creation drive is still there it's about figuring out like what the next mountain is how we want to roll the boulder up it do you want to use dynamite or do you want to use a pulley system <laughs> so it's um it, it's kind of it's it's figuring it all out for us but as as far as we're concerned like we still want to 
be a band we still want to play shows we still want to push this to as many people as want to listen to it like um the goal for me has always been i i feel as though there should never be a boundary in terms of who would enjoy our music i've seen enough people and met enough people who have been like you know what i don't really like metal or i don't really like rock or i don't really like heavy music but i listen to you guys or i watched you guys and i get it and now i come to i come to your gigs or i pick up your records and i'm like well that should just be the case for everyone on this planet. So spread the word, basically. <laughs> so just try and get it out to as many people as possible because like, it's, there's no reason not to. So we're going to keep trying to figure out how to do that. Um, just hopefully in a way that's more holistic for us so we don't destroy our yeah, mental stability in the process. <laughs> well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Um, yeah, I, I, I really... <laughs> It really is, though, inspiring for, um, you know, people like me that are, um, I'm just a lowly DJ in Appleton, Wisconsin, you know, like, but I, we all go through struggles and we, we feel like we get to a point and we're like, well, I got there. Not, well, now what? And yeah. then also being, like you said, you guys became at peace, which is, I can't even imagine what that feels like um, when yeah. you got to that top of the mountain. But to see that you still wanted to work on yourself is is real inspiring and we as fans radio people music people just human beings are, are very appreciative of that oh cheers man yeah it's thanks it's a very it's a it's an interesting one because when i say we're at peace with it it took us several months to acknowledge the peace <laughs> like <laughs> the mental health stuff really like it was a it was a really big thing to to unpack uh many many years of ingrained like thought processes about yourself when you when you see yourself as an underdog for your entire career it's very hard to acknowledge the fact that maybe you've actually got somewhere <laughs> so so yeah and i definitely encourage people to to take mental health seriously um because at the end of the day like your body is the vessel but it like it works in in tangent with what's going on inside your brain and no one else is ever going to be in there other than you. So you have to figure out what you need to do and how you need to do it. And there, there's people who are trained to do that, to help you. Like you're not the only one out there feeling this, this way. You're not the first person to have feel isolated or feel depressed or feel confused or anything like that. And it, it goes from the people all the way up on the top of the path, all the way down the bottom, like have a chat to someone reach out because at the end of the day, like if, you're far better off with someone next to you like helping you than you are just by yourself trying to figure it out that's fantastic advice i i and and to you said something about seeing yourself as the underdog you guys had that the documentary um that i had to write the name down i'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, uh, viva the underdogs yes oh so, so now that you know you have that and you, you've seen yourself as the underdog and now you've seen all the success is that that's what push into that next level is all about i think so yeah like yeah to be honest it's um it's going to be an interesting one because we haven't we haven't gone back on tour after it but i think it's a bit it's a lot easier for us to validate ourselves and what we've actually done now which is good and i think it's it's less about now um that fight against the, I, I think I'm not going to say we made things harder than it had to be, but um, it's about about acknowledging the strengths that we have and acknowledging the moments that you get as well, rather than just relentless drive. I am so grateful for everyone in the band having the relentless drive because it really did, it really has got us to where we are. Um, but now being able to take some time to calculate a bit more and realize that. <laughs> probably could have done things smarter than rather than harder <laughs> but yeah like it's um oh we still we still have the drive to to like to push this further like i said and i think the really awesome thing is that it, it all comes from a creative like the the creative little core um with everything we do it's there's no point ever where we're fighting to get a song out or struggling on the road or anything like that where we're like you know what this is not enjoyable and we don't ever want to do it it's always a challenge which we want to rise to and every time we we get to the top of something 
I said before, like we're at peace, but at the same time, like in my brain, I'm like, this is cool. But I think there's another level which would be even cooler because I mean, why not? Like I've seen what a field full of people as far as the eye can see looks like when you tell them to jump and when they're singing and it's rad, but maybe that can be more. <laughs> maybe we can write a, an album which tops the last one. Maybe, like who knows? And I'm, I'm always fighting because the well always refills in terms of creativity. You give it all, but when it comes back, you're like, all right, let's go again. Let's pour it all into something else. <laughs> we keep pouring it back out. So uh, there's like, as long as that well keeps refilling, I'm keen to keep pushing. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, Winston, an amazing time to talk to you. I appreciate you uh, being so open about uh, everything that's going on in the band. And, uh, and we look forward to hearing uh, that. Well, obviously listen to Nick Glitch and the <laughs> unnamed album that I'm not allowed to know. <laughs> Mystery songs. <laughs> yes. yes. To, be to, to be heard soon. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right. We'll see you, bud. Thank you so much. Have a good one.